Alrighty, onwards to section four. This is gonna be a bit of a challenge. We're gonna see how much of this we can do without a calculator since I'm, my technological skills are still hindering me from figuring out how to write on screen, but all right, let's see. So number one, John runs at different speeds as part of his training program. The graph shows his target heart rate at different times during his workout on which of the interval, on which interval is the target heart rate strictly increasing and strictly decreasing? Okay, so none of the parts where it's flat, so not like 10 to 30 or 70 or so not 10, oh, okay, so not that, not maybe CB or C, what's 50 to 56? Sorry, 50 to 65, 65 I think is where it flattens out. Strictly, that's decreasing, then it's B. If Y equals KX, where K is a constant, and Y is 24 when X is six, what's the value of, okay, so if Y is 24 and X is six, then we have 24 is equal to six K, so K is equal to four. What's the value of Y when X is five? Y is equal to four X, so if X is, it's 20, C. Three, in the, in the figure above, lines L and M are parallel, lines S and T are parallel. If the measure of angle one is 35, what's the measure of angle two? Uh, they're gonna be complement, they're gonna be supplementary, like add up to 180, so D. If 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 4, is 24, okay, so six, 16 plus 4x is 24, so 4x is eight. What's the value of 8x, 16, C. Next page. Which of the following graphs best shows a strong negative association between D and T? That means when D increases, T goes down. Uh, like A kind of, but it's really scattered. D is like better, I think, because it's more like clear, so D. Six, a hospital stores one type of medicine in two decagram containers. Based on the information given in the box above, how many one milligram doses are there in one two decagram container? This is a conversion rate. Let's make sure that we write the equation out. Do it sort of in the style of chemistry when you're trying to eliminate different units and stuff. I'll be sure to put it on screen later. So then we're gonna wanna do two decagrams, multiply that by the conversion ratio that we derive from one decagram equals 10 grams. So two decagrams times 10 grams over one decagram with the decagram being on the bottom so that it cancels. Uh, we're also going to multiply that with 1,000 milligrams over one gram with the gram on the bottom so that it cancels with the other one uh, that, that was on the top before. So then we're going to have to do 2 times 10 times 1,000, which is like D. The number of rooftops in, with solar panel insulations in five cities is shown in the graph above. If the total number of insulations is 27,500, what's the approximate label for the vertical axis of the graph? Okay, so the first one's like at nine, so I don't think it's like 90,000. I don't think 900's at C, if I have to estimate. Hopefully we're right. Uh, eight, for what value of N is absolute value of N minus one plus one equal to zero? There's no such thing, right? Because absolute value is always positive. So a positive number plus one wouldn't be zero. That would mean that it, like the absolute value thing would have to be negative, so D. Okay, the speed of sound wave in air depends on the air temperature. The formula above shows the relation between A, the speed of sound, okay, in feet per second, and T, the air temperature. Great. Which of the following says the air temperature in terms of the speed of sound of the wave? So if we want to solve for T, then we're going to subtract 1,052, um, move it to the other side. So we'll get one, A minus 1,052 is equal to 1.08 T, and then divide by 1.08, so A. 10, at which of the following air temperatures will the speed of a sound wave be closest to 1,000 feet per second? Uh, they're really straining my brain. Okay, so then um, we need to plug in 1,000 for A and then see if we can solve for T, uh, given that they told us that the speed of the sound wave is 1,000 feet. They're just telling us to make A equal to 1,000. So 1,000 is equal to 1,052 plus 1.08 T. You'll get negative 52 is equal to 1.08 T. So whatever 52 divided by 1.08 is, I think I'm gonna use some answer choices to help me ballpark. Like I'll start from D, because 50 is kind of a nice number to multiply 1.08 by. I believe that'll give you 54. So if we have 54, we wanna go down like two degrees, because each degree is gonna drop it like a little bit more than one degree. So I'm gonna guess B. 11, which of the following numbers is not a solution of the inequality? 3x minus five is greater than or equal to four x minus three. Let's just rearrange that. You'll get x is less than or equal to negative two less than or equal to negative two, so A, too big. 12, based on the histogram above, of the following, which is the closest to the average number of seeds per apple? So we need to get the total number of seeds uh, and divide that by the total number of apples. So to get the total number of seeds, you'd have to go like, first column, if we have two apples with three seeds, so that'd be like six. We have five apples with four seeds, so that's another 20, so 26 so far. Six apples with one seed, so that's an extra six, so 32. 
seven uh, two apples with seven seeds. I'm not sure if I was saying that the right way up until now, but hopefully I was. Seven apples with two seeds. Uh, Two apples with seven seeds, that'd be an extra 14. That'd bring us to 46, hopefully, if I kept count. And then three apples with nine seeds is an extra 27. So 46 plus 27 is 73. We need to divide that by 12. It's going to be like six point something. So C. Trying our best. Uh, a group of 10th grade students responded to a survey that asked which math course they were currently enrolled in. The survey data were broken down as shown in the table above. Which of the following categories accounts for approximately 19% of all survey respondents? Okay, so how many respond? There's 310. Uh, let's see. So then 19% of 300 would be 19 times 3, which would be 57. 19% of that extra 10 would be like another 2. So I think it's going to be close to like 59-ish. A female's taking geometry. Female's taking geometry is 53. I think too small. Female's taking algebra 2, 62, maybe. Male's taking geometry, 59. Nice. Male's taking algebra 1, 44. I think it's uh, C. The table above lists the length to the nearest inch of a random sample of 21 brown bullhead fish. The outlier measurement of 24 inches is an error of the mean, median, and range of the values listed, which will change the most if the 24-inch measurement is removed from the data. Uh, the 24 inch measurement is the largest. If we remove that, then the range is going to decrease by eight and removing one value out of a chart of like 21 things isn't going to decrease the median by like eight uh, or, or the mean by eight. The mean would like, I think, stay the same or just move over maybe one spot and then the median would change like whatever eight divided by 21 is. So I think it's C. 50. What does the C-intercept represent on the graph? C-intercept means H is 0 because Y-intercept means X is 0. X-intercept means Y is 0. So like something intercept means the other axis is 0. So if they're asking for what C-intercept is, that, that represents when H, or the time in this case, is 0. So we want something that represents no time has passed. So initial cost is probably that because the initial time is like when no time has passed yet. Number of total boats is not no time has passed. Total number of hours the boat is rented so i don't think it was rented for no time and then the increase in cost to rent it for for each additional hour it's not each additional hour if it's no time so a which of the following represents the relationship between h and c always use graph plugin when they allow you to if they give you a graph plus equations you take a point from the graph and put it into the equations and then you don't have to get worried about being tricked by the weird labeling of this graph like you can see that the x-axis goes in like units uh, like one two three so in fourths so, so every four boxes is like an increase of one, whereas the y-axis goes up by units of one, where each box is a unit of one. So this graph is not going to look at all like how it's being presented to us. Uh, so I'm just going to pick a point like maybe one, eight, and then plug that into the equation. So h is one, c is eight. Let's see which one gives us the true answer. A is going to give us uh, eight is equal to five, not true. B is going to give us eight is equal to five plus two. 3 4 is not true. C is going to give us 8 is equal to 3 plus 5. True. D is equal to D gives us 8 is equal to 3 times was. So Let's see. 17. The complete graph of the function f is shown in the xy plane above. For what value of x is the value of f of x at its minimum? Well, f of x, the entire graph, f of x would be like the y value. So the place where y is at its minimum would be like where y is negative 2. And the x-coordinate where y is negative 2 be 1, 2, negative 3. B. 18. In the xy plane, if 0, 0 is a solution to the system of inequalities above, which of the following relationships between a and b must be true? Nice. This question might look a little crazy, but to our well-trained SAT eyes, we see that they've given us a point and that they've given us equations. This makes this point plug-in. So let's plug the point into the equations and see what we get. 0, 0 being substituted in for x and y in the top equation gives us 0 is less than a. So a is like positive. 0, 0 being substituted into the second equation gives us 0 is greater than b. So b is negative. So a. Uh, 19. A food truck sells salads. Oh boy, this is gonna be a fun to do in our heads. Okay, so the food truck, a food truck sells salads for six fifty each and drinks for two dollars each. The food truck's revenue from selling a total of two hundred and nine salads and drinks in one day was eight hundred and thirty six point fifty. How many salads were sold that day? Oh goodness gracious. Okay, so first of all, I mean, if we want to do this, the the 
the correct safe way, then you would set this up as a system of equations with the two equations being s plus d is 209 and then 650s plus 2d is 836.50 then you would use uh, elimination or substitution in order to solve for each variable. Given that my technological or, and well cognitive limitations are preventing me from doing that, I'm gonna try to estimate this. So I think I'm gonna start with C, given that 99 is kind of close to 100. So if we had 100 salads, that would mean that we spent $650 worth on that. That would be a remaining like 110 uh, drinks, 110 drinks, so 650 plus 220, that would be like 800 and, oh, it's actually kind of close. 660 plus 220, yeah, 870. So I think it's a little bit less than that. I'm going to I'm gonna lean towards B, but I can't guarantee that it's not A. I'm going to lean towards B and hope that that's a, a correct estimate. No guarantees, we'll see. All right. Uh, 20, Alma bought a laptop computer at a store that gave a 20% discount off its original price. Okay, so like, yeah, okay, cool. The total amount she paid to the cashier was P dollars, including an 8% sales tax on the discounted price. Which of the following represents the original price of the computer in terms of P? So P is the price that she paid. So this is gonna be percent increase decrease formula. If it, if it had a 20% discount, I know I'm gonna multiply the original price by 0.8. And because that's a 20% decrease. And if there was a tax, yeah, somewhere, okay, so there's an 8% sales tax, that means that I'm also going to multiply the original price by 1.08 to indicate an 8% increase. So the formula would be like P is equal to original price times 0.8 times 1.08. So in order to solve for original price, you would have to divide the 0.8 and 1.08. That would give you uh, D, still no one has those in the denominator, I think. 21, the data in the table above were produced by a sleep researcher studying the number of dreams people recall when asked to record their dreams for one week. Group X consisted of 100 people who observed early bedtimes and group Y consisted of 100 people who observed later bedtimes. If a person is chosen at random from those who recalled at least one dream. Uh, let's start with that. So one thing that I've noticed is that the dependent clause or the sort of the first thing that they mention when they're asking you proportion questions, that will typically represent the denominator. So a person chosen at random from those who recalled at least one dream. I think that that's going to be my denominator. And then the second part of the sentence is going to be my numerator, the part I haven't read yet. So let's see how many people uh, recalled at least one dream. So I guess we're, we're getting rid of the none column. I think we're gonna keep the one to four and the five or more. So we wanna add up those totals of so 39 plus 125. That'll give us a 164. So we need an answer to the 164 on the bottom. Assuming they didn't reduce it, so C. Nice. 22, which of the following best approximates the average rate of change in the annual budget for agriculture and natural resources in Kansas from 2000, oh boy, okay, hopefully this is easy to estimate, I hope, uh, 2008 to 2010 for agriculture, so it went from like 358,000 something to 488,000, oh, that was actually kind of nice, so it went up by like 130,000 over two years, is it per year? The at, best of the average rate of change in the annual budget. Oh, so it's per year. Yeah, yeah. So then we're going to do 130 divided by 2. So it's B. Uh, 23, of the following, which program's ratio of its 2007 budget to its 2010 budget is closest to the human resources program's ratio? 2007 budget to 2010 budget? Oh, boy. Uh, human resources, 2007. It's 4 million-ish. 2010, 6 million-ish. So we're looking at something roughly two-thirds. Agriculture and natural resources, just checking to make sure it's 2007, 2010. That's gonna be like three, uh, that's gonna be like three, four fifths or something. It's kind of, maybe kind of close. Education, two million-ish to three million. Oh, it might be that. Highways and transportation, 1.4 to 1.7. That's a little bit too close, I think. Two thirds would be something closer, like 1.2. Uh, public safety, 2. Uh, 26, 260,000. That's more like a half, I think. I think it's B. Again, check with your calculator, though. Nice. Which of the following is an equation of a circle in the xy plane with center 0, 4, and a radius with endpoint 4 thirds 5? Okay, so circle formula is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to radius squared. Keep in mind that the right-hand side is radius squared. Uh, looking at these, so they told us that the center is at 0, 4. That would mean that uh, x minus 0 plus y minus 4 should be on the left-hand side of the equation. Uh, the x minus zero would simply simplify to x squared. That's why all of these answer choices just say x squared rather than x minus zero. 
I need the answer to say x minus 4 because circle formula um, has like opposite signs in the parentheses. So if it says y minus 4, that means that your y coordinate of the center is 4. So it's going to be like a or c. Uh, I kind of want to approximate the length of this radius. I think that it's going to, if we're starting at 0, 4 and then moving over to 4 thirds 5, it's going to be the increase of distance on the y-axis of 1 plus an increase of like 4 thirds on the x-axis of like a little bit more than 1. So I think that this, the length of the radius is going to be a bit more than 1. So if we do that squared, then I want to get something like I think it's going to be close to like the like root two, like 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 two point something. Let's see which one gives us like two point something, something close to that. Uh, I think the answer is going to be. I want to say that the answer is a. Like like c to me looks like what the radius might be if is it two point something? Oh no, it'd be like one point something, I believe. Because it'd be a little bit bigger than like a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Yeah, so I, I think it's going to be something like, it's going to be A or C. I, I want to say it's going to be A because 25 over 9 is close to like 3, and then square root of 3 is close to 1 point something. And the reason why I square rooted it is because the right side of this equation shows R squared. So I want to say A, but we'll check. We'll see. Uh, 25. The equation above expresses the approximate height h in meters of a ball t seconds after it's launched vertically upwards from the ground with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second. After approximately how many seconds will the ball hit the ground? Hit the ground means height is zero. So h is zero. Uh, if we do that, then we can factor out a t on the right hand side. You'll get like t is, or t parentheses, negative 4.9t plus 25. So t can be zero uh, or negative 4.9t plus 25 has to equal zero. That'll give you like negative 4.9t is equal to negative 25. So negative 25 divided by negative 4.9, I'm gonna say roughly five, so d, hopefully. Katerina is a botanist studying the production of pears by two tree types of pear trees. She noticed that type A trees produce 20% more pears than type B trees did. So A is equal to 1.2 times B, percent increase formula, once again. Based on Katerina's observation, if the type A trees produced 144 pairs, how many pairs? Did the okay, so 144 is equal to 1.2 times B. So 144 divided by 1.2. I know that 12 squared is 144, so I think it's going to be like a 12, 120. Yeah, okay, so D, B. Uh, 27, a square field measures 10 meters by 10 meters. 10 students each mark off a randomly selected region of the field. Each region is square and has side lengths of one meter and no two regions overlap. So there's a hundred. Okay, so there's a hundred, it's a grid of 10 by 10. The students count the earthworms contained in the soil to a depth of five centimeters beneath the ground surface in each region. The results are shown in the table below. Okay, lots of numbers. Which of the following is the reasonable approximation of the number of earthworms to a depth of five centimeters beneath the ground surface in the entire field? Let's see. Uh, estimation, I think, to our rescue, I'm going to say that there are roughly 150-ish per region in this chart that they gave me. Now, I think that they said that this chart only represents like one of the... Uh, of each region. Okay, so then this, there are 100 regions and they only showed us 10 of them. So from those 10, I can derive that like each region has a roughly 150 in it. But then earlier they told me that this is a 10 by 10 grid, so there's 100 regions. So I'm gonna say that the answer is C, because it's 150 times 100. 28, if the system of inequalities y is greater than or equal to 2x plus 1 and y is greater than 1 half x minus 1 is graphed on the xy plane, which quadrant contains no solutions to the system? So if you want to graph an inequality of like y is greater than or equal to 2x plus 1, you graph the line of y equals 2x plus 1. So it'll have a y-intercept of 1 and a somewhat steep slope of 2. Then the greater than or equal to means that you shade everything above that line, including the line itself. Now, if we draw that line y-intercept of 1 with a slope of 2, you'll notice that the line, once you shade everything above it, passes through sectors 1, 2, and 3. It doesn't pass through 4. So if they're asking me what the system like doesn't contain, then, well, given that this line doesn't contain sector 4, uh, I'm pretty sure that the answer is 4, because there's nothing that the other line can do to make this line contain sector 4 now. 
29 for a polynomial p of x the value of p of 3 is negative 2 which of the following must be true about p of x it's a factor factor Oh, it's a remainder theorem. They haven't asked this in a really long time. I think this is the only time that they asked it. It was like a, this, this practice test, which has been around for quite a long time. I haven't seen it make an appearance on a QAS like ever since then, but the answer would be D because that's what remainder theorem tells you. I think it's kind of like an obscure concept and they realize that and that's why they haven't brought it back, but it's still good to know. I mean, we know that they had it in, they had it in, in their minds at some point, so they might bring it back for the new version of the test. Who knows? Uh, 30, okay, parabola. Which of the following is an equivalent form of the equation of the graph shown in the xy plane above from which the coordinates of vertex A can be identified as constants in the equation? Uh, okay. Well, the vertex, the, the formula that shows the vertex, uh, the coordinates of the vertex as like constants in the equation, constants meaning like just as like the visible numbers that you can see, is vertex formula. The vertex formula goes y equals a times parentheses x minus h squared plus k. Uh, the only answer choice that's written in vertex form is D, so I believe that's the answer. Wyatt can husk at least 12 dozen ears of corn per hour. That's a lot. Okay, and then at most 18 dozen ears of corn per hour. Oh, per hour. I, I don't know if that's a lot. I, my husking knowledge is not very uh, high. Uh, based on this information, what is a possible amount of time in hours that it would take Wyatt to husk 72 dozen ears of corn? Uh, I'm just going to say he goes at like 12, the rate of the slow rate, so then six. The posted weight limit for a covered wooden bridge in Pennsylvania is 6,000 pounds. A delivery truck that's carrying eight identical boxes, each weighing 14 pounds, will pass over the bridge. If the combined weight of the empty delivery truck and its driver is 45, how, okay, 4,500 pounds, what's the maximum possible value for X that will keep the combined weight of the truck, driver, and boxes below the bridge's posted weight limit? Oh my goodness. Okay, so then how, it weighed 6,000 in the beginning. It was 4,500 so there's 1,500 pounds that the boxes have to account for. So whatever 1,500 divided by 14 is. Uh, okay, so 14 times 100 would be like 1,400. And then I have to account for the extra 100. So what's 100 divided by 14? Like six, seven, seven points? Okay, so I think it's like 107. But beware, use the calculator. They allow you to. We'll check. Uh, 33. According to the line graph above, the number of portable media players sold in 2008, so 2008 is 100. So 100 is what fraction of the numbers sold in 2011 of 160? So 100 is equal to x times 160. So x is 100 over 160. So, that's, so 10 over 60, the 5 eighths. A local television station sells time slots for programs in 30 minute intervals. If the station operates 24 hours per day, every day of the week, what's the total number of 30 minute time slots the station can sell for Tuesday and Wednesday? Okay, so they don't like sleep, they just 24 hours straight. That means that there's 48 30 minute segments in there because there's two 30 minute segments per hour. 40, and then if there's two days, then 96, 48 times two, I believe. 35, a dairy farmer uses a storage silo that's in the shape of the right circular cylinder above. If the volume of the silo is 72 pi cubic yards, what's the diameter of the base of the cylinder in yards? Okay, so then area of a cylinder is pi r squared height. So pi r squared height is equal to 72 pi. You can remove the pi's from both sides. r squared height is equal to 72. We know that height is equal to eight. So r squared times eight is 72. That would mean that r squared is equal to nine. So then r is three. If R is three, the diameter is six. I think it's six, hopefully. 36, for what value of X is the function H above undefined? Undefined means that you're dividing by zero. So that denominator would have to equal zero. Let's set it equal to zero and then see what value would make it uh, equal zero. So then you have to expand it. X minus, so X squared minus 10 X plus 25 plus four X uh, minus 20 plus four is equal to zero. So then we have to solve for that. So you get X squared, uh, it was minus 10x and plus 4x. So minus 6x with a 25 minus 20 plus, plus 9. So x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to 0. x minus 3 squared. That factors into x minus 3 squared equals 0. So x is 3. I hope. <laughs> 37. Jessica opens a bank account that earns 2% interest compounded annually. Her initial deposit was $100, and she uses the expression 100 times x to the t. Oh, percent increase formula, nice. To find the value of the account after T years. 
What's the value of x in the expression? Uh, percent increase formula means that if you increase by like 2%, then you have to, you, you would mark that as one plus 0 0.02. Like if you increase by 10%, then you would want to show that as 1.1 because you would you would uh, you would mark it as like one plus the point 10. So if this increased by 2%, then we're gonna have a 1.02 being multiplied to uh, the 100. So I think 1.02 is the answer. Jessica's friend Taishan found an account that earns 2.5% interest compounded annually. Taishan made an initial deposit of $100 into his account. At the same time, Jessica made a deposit of $100 into her account. After 10 years? Okay, nice. How much more money will Taishan's initial deposit have earned than Jessica's initial deposit? Okay, we were on a, I think I was doing pretty okay up until this point, but I have to concede defeat. Like, there's no way I can do that in my head. I'm, I'm pretty sure it would be... Um, so to find the amount that Taishan's account has after 10 years at an increase of 2.5% interest, you would have to do 100 times 1.025 to the 10th power, which I am absolutely incapable of doing. And then to find Jessica's, you would have to do her original equation, so 100 times 1.02 to the 10th power. Uh, once you use your calculator, unless you're amazing brain power, because I, would, I had, definitely have my respect if you can do this in your head. Uh, then you want to subtract to those two, and then that should be your answer. So I'll find some way of putting it up there in the annotations later on. Cool. Well, hopefully you, you guys found that helpful. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. I know this series was kind of on the longer side. Um, I hope to do a bunch more of these in the future. Let me know if you found them to be helpful. Until next time, testers.